I was with the in my, uh, one of the elders he invited us at dinner. <laughs> and next to me was the ambassador of China. And that was the time when one of our elder national leader decided to go to China. It was announced. But somehow later he went to the West. So I felt that he's slightly upset on this. So just to console him, I said, Excellency, don't worry. The three countries that we have people to people contact. It doesn't matter about the world stories. And they are the Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and China. And you know what he replied? He said, Chairman, you have three countries where we have the people to people contact. But we have one country in the entire globe that is Pakistan. And we have people to people contact. So that kind of friendship, sincerity, passion we have. So kindly, as the Excellency has rightly said, the Chinese friendship is unique. And it is emerging, I think, second biggest economy in the world. Now they are in a position to contribute in our development. Earlier, I think we were doing it mutually. Now they can really contribute and you know, help us out the present situation. So we should not weigh this relationship in terms of material gains or loss. We should consider it a global strategic partnership and the linkage that we have with the Chinese. It's a strategic linkage and this friendship should be valued and we should proceed. So this is the, I would say, start of that my specific talk today would be evolution of CPA and challenges to regional connectivity. Our Excellency has rightly brought out that uh, we considering as if 10 years back we started our CPA and our relationship began with their No, our relationship with China as a civilization are thousands of years old. It's an ancient, you know, Indus Valley civilization and the Chinese civilization, they've been together here. And there have been silk routes and economic cooperation in a number of ways. Our relationship with the People's Republic of China also dates back to 60, 70 years. And I will talk about that in a little more detail. So my base talk would cover, you know, genesis and evolution of corridor concept. It started out in the, the present domain. Give you an overview of China's Belt and Road Initiative. And CPEC mission, objective, significance, scope, and progress, challenges, and Pakistan's options for regional connectivity, impact of CPEC on the Pakistan region and the globe. And to give you a few case history for developing the infrastructure in Pakistan that can be served as a lesson for us for driving the CPEC and way forward for holistic approach, national approach. Now, this is the evolution of corridor. It was this ancient silk road, and now we are talking of the 21st century silk road, the cyber, cyberspace. So, that is the transformation from here to now. Karakram Highway, National Trade Corridor, China's Belt and Road Initiative, and then leading to China's Pakistan. But this is the ancient silk road and its three routes. One coming to South in Pakistan, one going straight through Iran to Middle East, and one going to Samarkand, Bukhara, and then into Europe. So, this is the ancient civilization Greek, Egyptian, Persian, Dara, and Chinese, they participating in this cooperation. Texla was a hub of economic development, thousands of years of that. Because two main economic corridors were meeting here one coming from the north, other coming from the west. That is from uh, Grand Trunk Road. And this was 1966 <laughs> that the first time we have a serious collaboration for building of KKS jointly. And this was a you know, Himala Karakara Hindu, the meeting point through that this highway was passed. It was indeed a journey through the times and also, I would say, a journey through the rocks. Very tough, formidable terrain. Symbol of human resolve. Look at the Chinese camp and look at the logistics. Heavy, you know, snow, they think. 
logistics and survived. And we built in 12 years. And the cost of this building was 400 Pakistani Chinese. So it comes to one kilometer cost of one human life that we paid to build the gate together. And this is called the um, road on the rooftop of the world at 16,000 feet. And it's eight meter of the world. Because we never have paved road at that height. And then we went on to KKH improvement. This was perhaps the first project of CPAC, that concept. And I had the honor to launch this in 2008. President of Pakistan is invited. The 335 kilometers from Punjab to Raikou. And Alhamdulillah, it's completed. And this is the specification. So this is completed with the NHS National Highway specification. And crystal. Now, the second initiative for evolving the corridor was a national trade group, national trade corridor group. And this was envisioned as a Pakistan as a hub of regional connectivity. And the objective was to improve trade flows and transit cost and time. So these three objectives: travel time, 50%, 10% decrease in the road transport cost, and 50% reduction in the so the program was consolidation and upgradation of its And then we have the high speed north economic corridor. And then we have the regional connectivity border and linkage with border and developing border. So this is the chronology in 2006 at the president level, level interaction. They were discussing energy and transport sector initially. The feasibility was presented to the President of China on November 6th for rail and road links. And April, I think 2007, NTC was launched as part of Pakistan's media project. So there are for April 2008, we have a number of you know committees at the level. This is for the oil city, this is for the corridor, this is for the you know economic activity. But thereafter, I think for the next five years, we didn't have much. This is This was the corridor that we thought about. Now the next endeavor that we have is the NHS network as part of the Asian Highway Route by United Nations Economic Work Commission for Asia and Pacific. That serves a regional hub for cooperation for sustainable mobility. <laughs> now, interestingly, I'll just draw your attention for one thing. Now, incidentally, the, the linkage with Gaudar is missing. Most important, you know, feature in our connectivity and in our economic endeavor is the border. The deep sea port, this region, perhaps the it has been tremendous branch. Now, their priority is missing. Now, this is the Central Asian Regional Economic Office. And I would, they have included border, but towards China linkage, they're going all the way to the east, the east. And from Gaza, there is no linkage. So this is how. Our priorities somewhat differ with the global priorities and concerns. So we have to keep in mind that we bilaterally, mutually, our focus remains bilateral. And in that context, we will grow in the region and the world as well. Situation prior to CPAC, container dwell time was seven days, more than three times that developed countries have. We have the road run rate 95%, but two to three times. Slower trucking rates were very non comparative, very high. Rail carries 5%, but two to three times slow. Urbanization, safety issues, congestion, there was existing sustainable economic growth 7 to 8%. These environments are not viable. That is so. We've been thinking the scope of a discussion with the Chinese was that we upgrade existing. Take it. Then we talk of the high speed link to the cars in Gwadar. Then we carry the development, energy, trade, and industrial sectors. And we have economics, special economics on industrial zone and the export pollution zones. Develop Gwadar as deep sea port, as an oil city, and a factory public industry in power. And then hydropower projects. And they were willing to collaborate with us in the sector, planning infrastructure uh, of new cities around the world. So having given you just brief these two main corridors, I come to the main, that is the China's Belt and Road Initiative, 
I think the excellence is talk very comprehensively. So I'll just be very brief, although I will talk going to talk about the vision. It was launched in 2013 and now we are celebrating and here. Envision to connect the world and all aspects of human. That is the scope. The world and all aspects of human. Now it's an idea, concept, and a process. President China said it's a community of shared destination, digital silk road and cyberspace. So CPS is strategic economic partition, the flagship shit of here. See. So that is the part of it is in a in a way one bed, three axes, and several. Axes. One bed almost the entire Pakistan is considered as one with the core area and the adjacent. And then you have the three axes are central east and west. And then you have a number of passages in translating This is the Overall, now may not be the latest, but just wanted to give you a concept of what is the PRI. There are in, on the right, if you see, there is energy, there is a transportation, there is industry, construction, communication. And on the top is the bed component. And on the bottom, you see the dotted line is the marine component, that is the boat component. So put together, it is extending all the way to Europe and almost. You see the holistic, I just give the idea, but it is almost the entire globe now. Right up to Germany and Italy, say Egypt. Pakistan has the maximum, you can see at the bottom left for say slightly light shade and a medium green and then heavy green shade. This is about more than five billion dollars in Pakistan. And you see the number of initiatives you can see. Now the seat pack is this is a multi-dimensional. One continental component coming from Punjab, China, down to Rajin and Father, and secondly, coming all the way in the, to the sea and linking Gwadar. So, our Gwadar can be operational and start contributing towards a meaning component without even our road components. To that is the diversity and the potential of you know, our economic activity can be generated even before it is, the, it is connected with the land. Coming to the China Pakistan economic corridor, which vision, objective, significance, scope, and purpose. And this is how I'm sure you all know that the bulk of economic development in China is on the east, Beijing, Xi'an, Shanghai. And then, you know, towards the west, it is coming up. But still, it's a significant development in the recent years, west as well. And then, you know, go on to the other. Now, vision of China and vision of Pakistan. I'll, I'll request you to focus on these two aspects and we'd like to reconcile. The China thinks that we promote the Xinjiang economic and social development, speed of the Belt and Road Initiative, give greater plan to China's advantage of capital, technology, and budget operating industry, and from new, from new economic systems. And the Pakistan vision is to form new driving force for economic growth. Break away from the situation of low growth and high inflation, move from what but key bottlenecks in infrastructure, shape new industry, clusters, balance regional economic growth, and narrow the development gap to people's benefit level and enhance the domestic. Our focus here is more like national development, and this is our first phase. Then we grow to integrate the region, and then we grow to integrate the There has to be done. And the long term objective of this multifaceted program is to transfer Pakistan into prosperous and a just state that cares, gives self respect, and quality life to all sides, for all the multicultural society into true modern Islamic values. So, energy security, economic security, national security, all are focused on the world, will ultimately lead to. Equitable society, a prosperous society, high quality of life. Now, the CPAC immediate and middle terms. Now, to promote connectivity, this is its primary focus. With a multimodal network of highways, railways, airports, seaports, pipelines, and digital. <laughs> Facilitate trade along overland route that connects China to the Indian Ocean, taking the Chinese city of Kashgar to the Pakistan city of and integrating all sectors of national content. 
and it includes energy, mineral deposits, industrial process, economic center, export processing, urban areas, and tourism sites. Now, easy said than done. But if all that we are able to achieve, but Pakistan is to be different. So that is what is the I wish we were able to achieve what I always been as part of this program. Important and significant. CPEC, the most important historic initiative of the state of Pakistan for transforming the socio economic It's a total transformation that we if we get it, the way it is conceived. The China Pakistan Strategic Economic Partnership, not only loan based, it has to be innovative financing and multi dimensional cooperation. And this is to lead to growth of some terms. And CPEC. Holistic, integrated, consultative, coordinated, national. It's not in isolation bits and pieces. We have to see it holistically. We have to plan it holistically. It's always, you know, all elements are considered and comprehensively planned top down. And then the execution starts bottom up. Each bit, so I'm really getting the given time, resources, and time span. Everything is put together and we see our mission. See back to manage the projects. There was a giant cooperation committee and working groups, and they focused initially to four main areas, and that was the other city seaports and the airports, multimodal transportation sector, energy sector, all in being thermal, coal, solar, wind, and hydropower, and industrial sector use of the advanced technology. Now see that there's another role of CPAC as well, and it is strategic role, and this is more important for, for China. It's a solution to an alternative parallel route. Now, their marine component, it's a very long route, but still it is subject to rocket the time of you know, some kind of emergency. So our route, which is continental land route towards the other, it's going to give them a lot of flexibility. So for China also, it's a game changer. Now coming to the significance of CPAC in the context of traditional industrial uh, trading routes, uh, for Asian industrial nations. Now, you can see the development is in the East. They are now links, but I'm not sure how developed it is. And they are bringing to the West. This is like almost 4,000 4, billion the trade. <laughs> if we can take a of that, you can imagine where we stand. I just was thinking to a book. It says in 2015, China imported $160 billion of agriculture. Just take 10% of that and we start exporting it from here. And my So there are a number of things that we can look at in the context of uh, CPAC uh, economically and linking with this. I'd like you to kindly see this picture. On the East, though our relations at this point in time hold, but there are 1.5 billion people sitting. In the north, another 1.5 billion. And the west, another 1.5. So we are in the middle of 4.5 billion population. We accept 60% of this population in six hours. That is our geostrategic self. Regional and potential geotechnical geostrategy features. Now, I like you kindly very, very important prospects of them to highlight. Beyond sea. It was a month back that Iraq, Irani Prime, uh, Iraqi Prime Minister announced in the presence of nine countries together, Gulf countries. And they said they would build highway to link the Middle East and Turkey and beyond. And if you recall RCD, we had a plan to link from here and on in Turkey. Long time back. And just last week, the Saudi ministry has announced open a new Arab China Silk Group. Arab China Silk Group. Now, these two initiatives directly concern us. If we become part of this, we are part of the region and the globe. And if we get bypassed, if I like you to recollect, there were three routes coming from ancient. One coming to South, one going to Middle East and Africa, one going to 
Central Asia and Europe and Asia. You can see if the middle root gets activated and we get bypassed. And this is going to be a strategic set factors. So this is the time that at national level we must fully focus, get ourselves incorporated in this initiative, and we should be leading because we are ten years into it, planning and doing things. We can lead this whole endeavor, and it should be good for you. And we have linkages across the you know, all sides. Ten, there are ten, you know, border terminals. Five of them are ready as of today. Now we come to the China-Pakistan economic border implementation and progress of the plan. Now, short term, medium, and long. These are three phases: fifteen years and five years each. And we had, poor area was supposed to be Kashgar and the surrounding areas of the province, and in Islamabad, it was all four provinces of India. Then we had the important cities. Who did it? I will discuss the work slightly. Stages of the project. It has four stages. The first stage of early half is 2015 to 19. Mostly focused on energy and some project funds. 11,000 megawatt has been added so far. We can't waste success today. Short term 2015 to 20 mainly pertains to the road infrastructure and the site optical fiber. And incidentally, they are planning optical fiber 13,000 linking from Gawadar to East Africa. It's a global context. So, it's not time, but go to the details. But some of you, those who are doing the masters and PhDs, you can work on this one. So we have the road infrastructure and then linking with the digital infrastructure, hydropower, coal mining, energy projects. And this is partial needs. We have medium term 2025, railway, industrial, and economic. This feasibility stage and long term is still not taken. Now coming to the framework agreement on the transport. This was very, very important. Like the excellence said, two years it took to work out the planning for it. And incidentally, Chinese give a lot of time to the planning. When I visited in China, they took me a single span bridge, 1.8 kilometers. And they said, This is the biggest single span bridge in the world. And you are the first foreigner who is allowed to see this. And the only foreigner to allow it on the site. And I asked them, how long did you take to complete? It was about two, they were about to inaugurate this. Is that two years planning, two years execution? So the planning is done well. And I said earlier, for those who will join us now, strategic planning is the most important thing. See, looking at the thing holistically, comprehensively, and top down. And execution is always bottom up. Cut it into jigsaw and start, but depending on your sources, time altogether. Once you read 20, 30 years of vision, then you can. So, this was CPEC was formally signed on 20th April 2015. And <coughs> early harvest transport project was KPS phase 2, Kanko to Hawaii, Karachi, Lahore Waterway, that is Mutan sector, to other east, east Bay. And then international. It's partially completed. The road projects are mostly done. Airport is sufficient. Now, where was the strategic thrust of it? was the world class infrastructure. That was the first. Then we have the global logistics. And if you get into the global logistics chain, it's across the country. You would have the technology, warehousing, all. Things that your agricultural product can can be can stay there and can be marketed in the region and the global market. Advanced technologies, materials, sustainable and smart systems. Encouraging cooperation in public and private markets. Now, reducing the cost of doing business by improving. Now, three things are very, very important. And that we still are lacking by 
procedures, legislation, regulation, and administration. Services that is shipping, or services, talking, business, handling, work, warehousing, customs, insurance, right? There are a lot of impediments. You are still living in ancient times as for this place. Sometimes the businesses. So we'll have to get on it and make it more state of the art as the things are being done in the developed world. They facilitate the business. Infrastructure support, roads, rail, aviation, aviation, air transport, building, warehouses, type portion, type. Now, this is our traditional national highway infrastructure. And this is the four routes to begin. That was one starting from Kojra until Kabul. And the first phase was Kujra to uh, Raikot, 335 km. As I said, I had the honor to inaugurate that. And the second phase is under feasibility, and I think it's yet to be announced. And the biggest challenge in that is that the Asha Dam and this Dasu Dam, they have to rebuild the bypass, they are not finding it. They have then we have three corridors, Western Corridor, Central Corridor, Eastern <laughs> Now I'll just draw your attention to one thing and let you think about it. From Gawadar, we are getting only two lanes. Two lanes. And once we reach to Thakur, we have three and beyond. We have three axes. And each one six lane roads and with put the service road also four lanes, two lanes, both sides are standing. That makes 30 lanes. So two lanes coming from Gawadar to Thakur and 30 lanes expanding up to Taraj. This is a huge infrastructure. We have to reconcile. Are we building only for the local traffic? Or for the China? Or for region? So we'll have to optimize this. And if we cannot afford at this point in time, then we better phase it out. We started running on all axes. And none has been completed, and none has the potential to get completed next three to five years. We learn a lesson from great Soviet. The great power collapsed under the weight of its own infrastructure. You have to be very prudent, very rational, and not over ambitious. Now this is, I don't want to get into what this, this is the energy infrastructure, a lot of projects. At the left bottom corner, see the CPEC projects. And I want to group one of the CPEC projects and except one or two, most of these projects have been infrastructure projects. Spatial boundary of the corridor, you see the red one, this is the core area running cross Pakistan. This the scope is almost half of Pakistan is the core area. And the yellow one is the rest of the adjacent. So almost this is going to be in fact more parts. Special layout you have the, the roofs are coming all the way. Now again I say priorities. I need you to think about it. One is the western priority is through, which is you all know you are from KPK. Ruchistan and KPK. They are under challenges. It's a formidable tree. You saw rocks, saw bridge and the tunnel base. The second one priority is to the east, which is far away from the core area of what you are touching Thakur. And no commercial traffic will go that side. And we are not linked with the, we have not yet activated traffic, the, the trade with the with India. So what do we do? This is not easy to construct going to first quota and there is no population. Entire Baluchistan has 5% of Pakistan's population, 45% of this thing. So we are taking a huge six lane road here. And when it would get to it, and when we start earning from it, and how much is spent on square gear. And now see in the middle, it's a total line. This is your tax phase, order and long term. The heart of Pakistan, we are sitting today, our bulk of population, this is put into middle and long term. And then distribution of nodal cities, all the cities are connected. Distribution of industrial parks, very vicious, across the country, we have planned everything. And as the Excellency has said, we hardly have even operationalized one special economy. And that too, of course. 
Now coming to the Pakistan Economic Corridor challenges and the prospects. And since a lot of students have come maybe at the expense of repetition. So very comprehensively covered, I must say, I learned from His Excellency. Uh, he's covered very first hand information we had uh, about the challenges that we really, really faced. I would, what I experienced and what I think about it. So it's, it's the first is Pakistan enjoys great geostrategic saving. I'm going to be slow and a little bit deliberate and put these things in the minds of young generation. Just carry this thing from, from here and think about it in your own time. Because these strategic challenges and prospects are going to be, be with Pakistan for a long time. And you are the one to develop a business solution. So enjoy the great geostrategic significance, integrating ancient economic corridors and regions home to over 4 billion. 60% of the global population is accessible in 6 hours. This is our prospect. It's a united ecological unit coexisting with the Indus River system that constitutes a great binding force and hydropower connection. Starting from Drab, Gilgit, you know, coming to five and spreading all the way to the south. So I like, as a nation, we are going together, integrating all the Pakistan together. Located on Ethian Belt, Pakistan is considered one of the richest countries of the world in terms of resources. Know what is Ethian Belt? Starting from Russia, Russia there is a belt in the world going there are two deposits of rare deposits. There are two point deposits of gold, silver, gold, element, gold, 50 rare earth matters. And we are sitting in the heart of that. And somehow we have locked on the hands for the past many years. Sent. It's a tiny thing in the whole. For me, it's a tiny thing. We started spending a lot of energy thinking. Whereas there are so many other sites that we can exploit, we do not have the interest in the I am happy that Dr. Mutaya said we were focused on processing of materials and minerals. And this is something I really appreciate that you are current and relevant. Pakistan is gifted with natural topography and healthy climate conditions. Potential sites for health, adventure, sports, and exercise. So we have a place, if you develop cities, all over the world, people will come here. But we have to develop world level security and other facilities that we come and enjoy. Then we have the coastal areas gifted with a huge natural resources and technically ideal sites for strategic seaports, seafood industry. 1400 kilometers. We are only talking of water mostly. There is a Pasni, there is a Jumani, there is a Omara, there is a Kedi Pandra, there is a Kasaporta, number of ports. And there is a huge potential for sea industry, seafood industry. CPAC gives a geostrategic orientation along Indus River system. Now this is coming all the way. So that is you won't integrate. If you do not integrate, then what will happen? Now you are making Basha Dam, you will have to do your, get another 150 kilometers. Road oriented, washed away, and buried under this. We have to right now plan. Has great potential to augment national integration, economy, and global supply chains. Challenges to see. I will just, I will not talk in detail. I've just thought about it that why it has not been able to be. And I think there was a concerns about strategic planning. We had lacked in this policy framework. Geopolitical policy frame like who will do it and how will we do it? Would the <laughs> authorities require should it go under the planning position? Should it go as who, who is the owner of this thing? And we still not been able to show. Sometimes we make an authority somewhere to dismantle the work. So first we sit down in Pakistan, how we do this? This is the geopolitical dynamics, financing the mechanism. You're all financing mechanism, just think of the loans, nothing else. We don't have practically public private partnership legislation. Where the foreigners will have the faith in our system and they'll come and trust That will be fair and just with them. Then we have the professional competence. Certainly, 
And see, like this, we need many of them. I'm happy this coming up so far. Institutional support, security imperative, and implementation imperative. So, leave it here. Successful evolution, integration, and implementation CPEC requires what? First is holistic national approach, compatible policy framework, effective institutional support, and efficient implementation. Second is sustainable and innovative financing model, like strategic economic cooperation, public private partnership, and overseas collaboration. We have to find a mechanism for the overseas to accept sending money to us and we transfer them. Environmental impact assessment is must 200 kilometers super highway was in under impacts. So now if we build the CPI corridors at 200 kilometers of this road comes at the border and is washed away, you can imagine the economic loss to itself. We cannot afford that to build with the roads. Land acquisition before launching the project to offset the delays. High level joint committee for timely decision making. Project must be launched with clarity and objective. And you saw the vision of two countries. There was this have to have clarity. Would the Chinese investment global world trade would come to us or no? And how would we incorporate into lens? This is the question you must resolve before you move. need to associate qualify countries. Now, key national challenges. They will, these challenges will stay, as I told to some of the, to the students here. The boundary issues are, are, are since the inception of this country. And what are the partition lines cut across the river system, coastal areas, and our transport corridors? The key factors for selection of customers. If we don't incorporate these considerations, we will not be able to come up with the right thing. Connectivity issue, national, provincial districts are not integrated into the multi border transportation that CPAP routes remain truncated. You are traveling at 120 km per hour and suddenly you go on to provincial network or distant network, you see you're totally in a different So it has to be compatible. Unique weather pattern 80% of weather come in days. That brings water. Now we don't have the mechanism to regulate the water. What do we do? We throw it on the land. And that would take it without the infrastructure. Climate change, it's a living reality. Now we have seen extreme income. We are amongst the top 10 countries. How do we address this? We have a very high disaster risk profile. How many of us are doing research into this? Interest in increasing population has multiple impacts, congestion, safety issues, dusty deficit, both human and material, institutional credibility. Unable to honor our commitment, missing our Credibility is the most important. One's life as a human being, also as an institution. Now, this is, I put together both the infrastructures. And now you can see the rivers are coming, the hill torrents are coming, and under the hill torrents, we are building the coastal roof. And in the center of it, we have so many structures, so many. If we do not have a comprehensive, and as of today, since I have been dealing with these things, I know there is no comprehensive study on the environment. How would the impact be? And our alignments do not cater for all these challenges. Perhaps there is no coordinating mechanism. Now, this is without going to do some of this, I already talked about. We have a 40,000 megawatt potential of that. This will come one day or the other. Maybe we can't do it in our can do it, new generation can do it. And because it's very, very cheap, hydropower is the cheapest environmentally more acceptable. And you can see in the top that it is overlapping the or your energy hub. 60% of the energy of this world passing through the just next to our Kavala. Now, how do we integrate to realize the real potential of push? These are the 10 and is the mean primary factor that I just and in the next slide I will need 10 more and then second the selection shortest selection of shortest multiple connecting all strategic entities divided highways minimum four lanes preferably six lane future eight lanes with no lane service with two lane service for users railway road tracks for each direction air transport domestic international and trade seaport both existing tension dry ports and border terminals Auxiliary parallel lines, the western and eastern. I am talking of only 
I will be suggesting only put one road through. Start earning there and then expand to the rest of the years. Digital infrastructure, 5G network connected with optical fibers, fire and gas fiber, integrate the special economic zone, industrial clusters, and export. Now, these are the 10 secondary areas which must be integrated. And that is the connectivity with provincial district and local transport, connectivity, hard power generation and transmission system, linkages with minerals and other natural resources sites, connecting spatial sites and strategic sites, health supports, adventure, excursion, and tourism sites. This two touched on Institute of Advanced Technology and Site Tech Technologies. I had just developed a model. I was just, you know, impressed by some of the countries who launched advanced technologies. And I developed a model that if we can raise the institutes, universities like this, within three years, they are economically sustainable. With 12 revenues of revenue streams. And they will be entrepreneurial cultural spread. And then we, we, we develop the techno cities, science cities, like we have the broad, you know, Stanford. Connecting special sites, health, sports, <coughs> institution, then develop linkages with existing government centers, developing new cities and economic 100 kilometers either side of the pilot road that we have, we should get markets for immediate development. And then strategic corridors to Afghanistan and Central Asian countries and strategic corners Middle East, Europe, and Africa. These 20 things, when we are talking of the corridors, gentlemen, I am not asking you build it tomorrow or day after. When I am talking of the corridors, 100 years. If you are able to achieve this in 50 years, you are very lucky. That you have a corridor, you have planned sport motion, industries, modern industry. Process. And then you have both sides 100 kilometer developed, they are contributing to not only global, not only regional and national, but even global. Now, this is what we are talking about. The, this is a soft component, there is a hard component. And without going into there, it is a procedure to do the business. For the customs, it requires the, the rail, oil, gas, digital. How do they work together? There are some safety requirements. So you have to see, decide how much should be right. So they go together, so they go, what is more economic? So all this, I leave it here and you can think about it. But six lane, what we make, it should be a word standard. It should have perfect six lanes, with shoulders, with car rails for protection, we have the bridges, we have the all kind of road infrastructure, safety infrastructure. So that it travel becomes easier. Now you have the, I have given the different design. What we have, as we go along, somewhere there's a rock, somewhere there's a soft pad, somewhere there's a hard pad. So all the way you have different, you don't have one design. So you have to see design basis, for them, and ensure to that they adopt the right design at the right place at the right place. Now this is what we have the in the Corridor with the specifications, protective works. In the department of mountains area is different. We have the tunnels, we have the protective works. And now coming to next, this is the land use for Gawadar. This is like, begin with we have only 40, 90 kilometers and only some kilometers. And we have all the uh, complements here. It was planned in three phases. First phase is completed, almost 2006, and phase two we are going through. So there are a number of technical things. Primarily, it should have a capacity for it. It's a deep sea port, a huge container stand. One ship would perhaps, when it gets offloaded, it would have the capacity to carry 60 small ships. And then you have the long term dredging at 100 bucks by 2040. So this, this plan is already you know in. So I don't, I just want to give you a glimpse of that. And, uh, this is the, just the core function of other <coughs> special economics. And just have a look at that. It has the industrial component. It has the entire you know, manufacturing. It has the services. It has all the railway stations, international airports, other seaports, and number of activities will be there once it is considered. This is what I was talking. We are gifted with 1400 kilometers of and rich metals, and rich food, seafood, and 
so many industries. Besides, we have a natural port sites. So we can we can build the oil city. I recall since and yes, Salman came and he said, let's constitute the supreme Pakistan, uh, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan Supreme Coordination Council. One window operation and start undertaking mega projects together. So at the highest level, you take a decision and then everybody will learn to accomplish it. Some project here, some project there. So it's been, it was February 2009. I've been talking to so many. So where is this? We've been visiting a number of times and you know, looking for you know that, but this is this, this is for us, not for Saudi Arabia. And we have yet not activated and we have yet not appointed any person. I don't know. You would say why not? This is the portion. I would like to see something other than this. Just quickly, I'll go over since I have been associated with this infrastructure. So go over what is the Practical hiccups are the issues that you come across in the development of MACA industry. So the small infrastructures have different dynamics. When you're talking of the MACA infrastructure across the country, you got 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers of the right away, then things change. First is the Hadara motor. That I, will, I put it intensely here because I thought I'll be traveling on this and it concerns you. This is a 2007 and in front of me came a PC1 for operation of National Highway. I said, this National Highway can have 7 billion rupees. This is a network cannot be upgraded. There are curves, they cannot track them to and bring them to LHA speed level. There is a total urbanization. So I went to planning commission. I requested them, let's go and build a new road. He said, this 25, 30 meter we don't have. What do we do? I said, the 7 billion that you get. Let me align this, we make an alignment, and we will put the 7 billion and we acquire the health corridor. We get the land. Whenever you have the money, you build the land. That's very good. But we should not waste this funds on the old test line. They agreed, and I remember it's coming across. We went across cross country and we aligned all the way to Mansell. And the best part of this was, the length along the GT road and the length along the motorway was same, almost 103 kilometers. Though we went from the east, of, and I gave lavishly these uh, interchanges and let the local population enjoy the side. Went from the east of Abdabad, but somehow there were some hiccups. So this is what is the story of the right. Tasla Bath, Alignment, priority, and scope. These are three things. Now, this is what we want to do. It is part of national trade policy. So I was asked to give an alignment. Some study was already there before. Just to take this highway to jump, cross this Chenab, go on the other side and turn our life. I said, these are all flood plains. There's no problems. The pollution is here. Gojaraj, Shortport, Aslava, Nukan. This is no problems. No Come after 20 years. We built the highway today. What do we do? So, and we were, while we were discussing, I went to the office in the morning and the dawn was lying in front of me. Chairman and I shared logger head with running. That was not the I just picked up that, you know, newspaper and went to the deputy. I trust you, said, this was not the intent. The intent is that professionally I feel that we are not investing this money rightly. We should build this highway where the people are there and they can start using that away. He said, what's the solution? I said, I will put at 500 meters, red flags along both the lines. And I'll hire a helicopter. And you, 0.3 people of this country, who are in touch credibility and the professional company. And I'll fry them over. Whatever they decide, I will start building. <laughs> I did that. And this committee, they put member planning commission, they put the engineer in chief, our exigence, they asked him to be a part of this team because he wanted to make it more, you know, professional activity. <laughs> And they, once they went all the way straight alignment, it's now the shortest route. And you know, it is 60,000 for 24 hours, 60. One kilometer, you had 60,000 kilometer professional commercial traffic travel more. That much of extra expenditure. 
so we crossed over chenab and we saw all wilderness and that day to our good luck you know it was a windy day so the sand was growing and there was recent flood so there was a flood plain, right see there was the person was there he said you can't build the idea for this sustainable i said that's what i'm talking some and once we touched on that you know this airport from there the chairman of the committee called the planning commission chairman said that was right and i appreciate there is institutional strength of our planning and he said it's a group to start model and i'm going to like to say so we will uh, just as the uh, one sera highway that i talked about and this is this is what the festival about how it's, it's, it's M1. When I came and I was thought it's been there ten years and this is we made Islamabad Lahore uh, and we should make Islamabad Shahar also. It's been ten years it's not there. So I was discussing with Mister that let's give us some resources. It's it's one point one five billion is allocated that, and the work requires more than ten billion. Can you ten billion ten years? Can't build this road. So give me more money. While we were discussing, we had an academic meeting, and the prime minister was here. And to get some credit or some, you know, give good news, the our chairman said, uh, our minister said that we want to uh, put this road through this year. And everybody from from KPK minister they started. You know, this is attended by almost two hundred people per second. It's impossible. It's just the you know, base course is there. And finally, he asked me, and I said, "Okay, sir, we will give you a permission date, six months, provided you get your permit." Because of this, and incidentally, there of it was April two thousand seven, and October thirtieth of two thousand seven, we now got it inaugurated, six months. So we did work more than ten billion, twenty times. There was one billion for one year, and we six months we more than ten. And all done by our local contribution, and under the environments that once this committee was formed, Prime Minister sent a committee there on which and they sat on the bridge of Kabul and said, "Even well, this Kabul river is not. How do you do it?" And all the eight contractors and their national contract level contract, they said, "If the chairman has given a word, we will work." And they work twenty-four hours. And I said, "I can do a favor to you. I'll give you my mobile." And forget to be proud. I am your project director, not the chairman. You call me in the middle of night, and how? Because there are critical activities to build this bridge. No, there is no chairman of this. And Subhanallah, this is this is still the one. This stood by the institution, and it's a team stood by, and they worked on before. That is what I am saying. And my conclusion here is that if we want to build C pack. We should not revive the targets. We should go ahead and implement what we are, our targets are in 2030. And this is seven years. We make it to 20 years. And we put our people and give them private, put them three times. Now oh, this is what M M2. Salt range was already there. Topography is already there. Nothing is new. We took our waterway right in the middle of it. It is sinking. There are so many accidents. Even yesterday I saw. So trailer is turning and crushing the cars. It's three percent more than the wood gradients. It is a three, and it's almost eighty kilometers longer than the. I will leave it how it happened. Lorry tunnel project. This is what we started in seventy, and we could not do it. Uh, we made a lorry tunnel organization, and we could not manage because it is a very special geology. Such make so lot of water in it. Then we re. And and this was given to some board officer. They came to me and there was whole team was sitting in Sambal and showed me a picture where there's a you know boulders are flying and all that. Said, "Sirman, you are not impressed with this topography? Not impressed. Well, we brought you here to build a road in those difficult areas, not in Sambal. You should go 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 back and start working and start delivering it." After a while, as I I just I get a call from the prime minister. So he tells me he is not thinking, he is not taking it seriously. They have serious problems. I said, sir, 
this is it's a complicated driven. If they have a technical problem, I will solve. It. And if I have a problem, then I'll come. Kindly send them to me. So before they come to me, always I call their Sambo president. I said, you come here. Otherwise, the project is going to be scrapped. <coughs> because they are, they are not delivering and they do not intend to deliver now. Kind of him, such a big company, international repute. He came here. I took him to this side. And he said, This man is not delivering. I agree with him. I said, I think 16 meters daily, 8 meters on both sides, 3 plus this. If you don't give me, you will not be able to complete it. I just want, don't want to give you 2 years and then say, Okay, you are not done. So you give me today 16 meters daily, I'll let you do it. Otherwise, back up. She said, No problem. Give us 2 months, we will revive. And Alhamdulillah, they put it on road. And during this SWAT operation, it was talk of the security condition for Chinese. SWAT operation, you are all familiar how tough it was for the security of foreigners. They all came to Islamabad in my office. Yeah, man, you cannot do it. Now the situation is that access is like this. It's sexy. So the water is going down. If you stop this project and this tunnel then it was 2 kilometers. If it gets filled up with water, that's it. We burned our billions of rupees are dumped and the contractors billions of rupees are also. Said we can't work under this security knowledge. While they were sitting, I just arranged to Governor KPK that there will be two helicopters standing at the airport and this is their mobile number. And this is my mobile number. Go back and if you have any security concern, call the pilots and they'll be here. And I deployed two more FC troops, FC platoons, and Alhamdulillah thereafter we never had. So security in this country is a relative term. Alhamdulillah, I have I have conducted Chinese in Gwadar, in Pakistan, in hardcore of security. And I was going on a normal car, normal jeep, and they were going in ABC. And I said, let, let them go. First, the security is free. Like some of these style, I don't have any. So now even this is what expanded. Now just conclusion. In Pakistan, in our own indigenous environments, our own people can deliver the sea. They have the capacity. <laughs> Provided we support, give them institutional support, and we trust them. So alignment is the main issue. Side difficulties are would always be there. We are dealing with an issue, it is a diversity, variability, time constraints will always be there. Everybody wants things by yesterday, so we, we should be mindful. Land acquisition, the problem. So first we buy and then we know. And we need expert consultation. We should have. Now Pakistan's option for regional connectivity. Now this I'm very close, keep patient, inshallah. So it's impact on the region. We've talked of an integrated pan Eurasian economic zone with Pakistan as South Asian gate. They would like to And they would like to give us the full membership as you if we are able to deliver this project. So we have a great potential, great opportunity. Push linking the Tajikistan to Afghanistan and then things. I recall 2008, I presented this core option to the President of Pakistan. It's a very easy project, we can get it done. But then the things were different in Afghanistan, we couldn't do it. Now we can do it. This is the route to Kazakhstan. You already have some, when I was in NLC, we started this. I said, let's start doing it. And we started sending it to Central Asia. We also started sending to commercial railroads to uh, Ankara and they are already in operation. Now this is the CPEC option of regional connectivity. Now all the way as I discussed, we can have the CPEC locally and integrate it into Central Asia, Pakistan is our first and then go on to and these two initiatives that are being you know, talked about and they are launching it, we should get part of it.
Now, what is this proposed alignment that I'm, I'm suggesting? This is the most important. I say, start from Punjab and come to Mansara and don't go to that Indus Valley. This road was put in Indus Valley, it's all rocky area. In 60s, when this was not possible to have all season road here. Now we can have all season road both in Kavan because the glaciers are drifted, snow lines are drifted, and this will be half the cost, half the time, and most valuable. No hydro project, power project, no realignment subsequent. And from here, take it to the central route, and this will link all the six entities starting from Gilgit. AJK, APK, Punjab, Sindh, Lutzna. One corridor linking or this is the most important integrating. So this initiative should be started. Somebody can do work. I have done detailed written the working paper on this also. The marine component should be launched and they can develop the coastal area. So Talking about immediate goals and the way forward. Presently, world is in strategic flux. The entire world things are happening that no, it's not peace. While humanity is struggling with several interlocking challenges, the shock after shocks of pandemic, climate change, energy crisis, and disruption global supply chain because of it. In this backdrop. China Pakistan economic corridor requires an entirely new paradigm with focus on high impact strategic initiative coupled with holistic planning, innovative financing, and phased integration. So, front loaded, we start earning as we develop, we integrate them into our economic activities. This will entail restructuring CPAC to evolve new plans, new priorities, new collaborations. To deliver an inclusive and sustained economic growth and unlock the economic potential of this. Define key aspects of strategic partnership, especially expecting quantum of the Chinese world trade. Sit down with the China as how much do we bring? We know what is the our capacity within the country. Through CPAC, since its corridor planning, designing, execution mainly depend on this structure and endeavor to attract at least 10%. That will be enough for us 300 million trade. It's good enough to sustain this world. So, this is my suggestion for high impact initiative. I recommend that revitalize CPAC, operationalize proposed to being the shortest and linking legal Pakistan, HAK, and all provinces, integrating with network of NHA, Asian Highway, and United Nations Group, and Central Asian Regional Corporation. Develop Gwadar as deep water commercial port, city as hub of oil and gas, and also operationalize the air, airport for economic development. Extend CPAC into Afghanistan and Central Asia. Joint collaboration on nine Gulf countries, as we talked about before. Join the Saudi China collaboration for modern China Arab Silk Route. Integrate the marine component of PR for the PRI for the development of coastal area. Plan single free gold road. Single free for and then extend it after you run from there. And master plan for integrating all national and district networks. Plan to transfer parks into other energy transit trade industry. Now, gentlemen, this is my last slide, and I say these are the defining moments for this. to bring about a paradigm shift in scope and approach of issue. Unlock the person on the Revival of program requires intimate support and consensus of national leadership, prioritization and implementation. But this kind of thing never get completed in one government. What do you do? Every government will start a new C bank. It's not possible. Every government will like to undo our investment. It's a country investment. Can't afford. It's five years, and our objective in C bank is 15 years. Every government comes of five years, maybe at most. So now every the entire leadership have to sit down and agree on some mega projects. Or disagree at least. Disagree with this company. Don't invest more than this. And if you agree, then obviously it will take a 
So competent multidisciplinary team is required to proceed efficiently and professionally. So holistic planning, efficient execution.